Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can buy it on our website. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches, including this one, on thewatchbox.com. Today we're discussing one of the IT watches of 2018, a timepiece that was in some respects foreshadowed by the Mono Pusher Chronograph for Only watch in 2017. This is the FP Journ Line Sport Chronograph Mono Poussoir Rattrapant, a timepiece that is larger than life, figuratively and literally, 44 millimeters in rose gold, the successor to the Santagraf, is massive. It's not exceptionally thick because F.P. Journ hates thick watches, so he holds the line at 12.1 millimeters thick for a robustly built and highly complicated watch. It is broad though, you will find across the wrist it stretches its wings as between rigid outer extremities, from side to side, this is a 54 millimeter watch, so I would say it probably wears best on a wrist 15 centimeters in circumference or larger. Not saying you couldn't pull it off on 14, but I'm thinking 15 is probably the lower limit to avoid a great deal of lug overlap. It is massive. First, it's a big watch. Second, it features a full red gold clasp and bracelet. And third, it features a full red gold movement. So this watch is a singular piece. There are three versions available. The warmest is the rose gold that you see here. The most exotic is the platinum with the mauve dial. And then I would say the sportiest is the titanium variant, but all of them are technically line sports watches. So this is a red gold sports watch from FP Journal. Now you will note the bracelet is very nicely made. You might wonder what's up with the baby buggy bumpers on the bracelet and the case flanks. Well, exactly that. They are bumpers and natural vulcanized black rubber designed to isolate the red gold, which is all blasted into a matte finish and help to make the common contact points somewhat more resilient and act as raised protective surfaces as well as flanking protective surfaces for the gold itself. You can see on the underside just how dramatically channeled and parted these links are. First, F.P. Journ wanted them to be comfortable, and they are. Second, he wanted to be able to aerate the wrist and avoid the pinching of skin and pulling of hair, and that is exactly what he delivered. You can see there's a little bit of a delta or directional taper almost an arrow-like shape drawing the eye away from the case. And you will note all of the screws properly polished and outboard for sizing of the removable links. You'll find more of them on the opposite flank. And then there's a best kept secret and something F.P. Journ has not adequately communicated, which is the five millimeter incremental adjustment system that's actually built into the clasp. If you want to Rolex style, pull out an extra five millimeters of length, there's a system complete with spring-loaded ceramic pin snaps that allows you to add the equivalent of one removable link or remove the equivalent of one removable link and it's built in underneath the FP Journ marquee on the clasp cover. It's a double deployant system, very robust. As you can see, all of the closures are by essentially invulnerable ceramic pin snaps that will ensure the long-term tolerances, the manufacturing tolerances of this bracelet remain from the day it leaves Geneva to the day you finally pass it on to your son, your grandson, or a very fortunate friend. Now you will note that the case band is simple, but it is fully integrated into the bracelet. This is a little bit controversial, and I'm not going to lie. It's polarizing. It's probably the single most polarizing aspect of the watch. It's love or hate, which is to say no one looks at it and says, eh, it's kind of okay. People say, I love that, or I despise that. I can't conscience buying it. So depending on which side of the fence or the lug you're on, you may simply love this watch, or you may love to hate it. You also note that the case band is remarkably slim. Jorn breaks up the structure of the case, so though it's not absolutely thick, it is nicely differentiated. There's a sort of rule of thirds about this case flank. One third is the tachymeter, the crystal, and the polished flank, the bezel. Approximately one third is the mid case, and one third is the case back. It's beautiful, it's classically gorgeous, and I'm sure there is a Greek mathematician of antiquity who could tell us exactly what kind of phenomena is at play here from a mathematical standpoint. Math and beauty, one and the same with F.P. Journ. You will note that the pushers are polished for contrast and beautifully elongated. They're even somewhat curved to trace the arc of the case. Everything is by design on an F.P. Journ. There is no default design. There are no accidents. 
You'll note that the dial is remarkably complex. I first saw this dial as a CAD CAM file at F.P. Journe's dial maker, Cadranier de Genève, and it looks pretty much exactly like this in the computer, so much so that I wasn't allowed to take a picture of it before the watch debuted. The timepiece is rich with a ruthenium-coated dial base that has a number of different textures. It's stamped to create that sort of clou de Paris at center, as, the, as well as the sunken hour track. All of the hands, as well as the numerals themselves, are applied and satin-finished red gold for a muted appearance on the ruthenium base. Classically, F.P. Journe is the assembly of the separate bezel, which frames the registers at 9 and 3. As you can see, there are polished and visible exposed bolts, so it's still an F.P. Journe. That core DNA is there, as is the classical form, I should say now classical form, almost 20 years later, of the F.P. Journe biomorphic tapered hands. Outboard, there's a sort of neo-railroad track for reading the seconds and the minutes, and you will note that this is what's called a mono-pusher ratropump. That's to say you start and you stop with the mono-pusher at 2, and if you wanted to split the seconds, for instance, to gauge the time of two different events that start concurrently and conclude at slightly different times. You press the trigger at 4 o'clock to split those hands, and then to keep everything running, if you want to continually gauge the splits, as they say, you press the retropunt trigger again, and it flies right, right back to keep up with the primary seconds hand. Now, that said, once you stop it, it's going to reset. So what you can't exactly do is use it as a conventional two-pusher, three-button Rattrapont. It doesn't have quite that functionality, but it is gorgeous, and it's nicely balanced as there's a symmetry. You can split it right down the middle. F.P. Journe finally giving us a modern Journe chronograph with a date. There is a quick set system for this extra-large date, as Journe calls it, and the system allows you to rapidly and easily cycle those enormous disks of the extra-large date, like so. The watch does not feature hacking seconds. That's one contemporary function that it lacks. It's also really the only contemporary function that it lacks. On the case back, Splendor. Let me see how close I can get, because this one deserves its spotlight solo as well as its close-up. Okay, you're looking at FP Journe caliber 1518. So called because work on this movement started in 2015, and it is 18 French lean across, which is to say over 40 millimeters across. Not just bigger than a Rolex Datejust, but slightly larger than a Rolex Submariner. That's across in diameter. The movement, entirely in red gold, weighs a ton. Again, when I was at Journe's manufacturer, this time at the main building, I was in the basement where the movement blanks are fashioned into bridges and plates, and holding the solid gold mass that becomes this movement is almost like palming an entire U.S. golden dollar. It's stunning just the heft of the blank. Now, it's beautifully made, 29 joules. It has a manually wound 80 at or power reserve. It beats away at 3 hertz, or 21,600 vibrations per hour. Let me see how I can show it to best advantage. You can see the retropont trigger is at center, flanking the chronograph center wheel, and then there are two column wheels, one here, one here, that act as the twin actuators for the retropont system, as well as the chronograph as a whole. You can see all of the levers interacting with the column wheels, the twin column wheels. You can see the hammers falling on the heart cams at center, and you can see the immaculate red gold bridges and plates. The finishing is good. It's not quite at Patek levels because F.P. Journe does use a little bit more machine finishing to speed the process and operate with a relatively skeleton crew, but the finishing is of a very high grade. I would judge it to be equal to or superior to what you'll see on most Audemars Piguet products. The timepiece is simply gorgeous, and the movement is fully visible, and that's key. F.P. Journe likes to create movements that are visible. You can see everything that's happening. So it's broad, it's spread, and it features a free-sprung balance because that makes for the easiest adjustment in multiple positions, so it's precise, and the best and most robust resistance to concussion and shock on the wrist because it is tough. Beautifully made with black polished screw heads. That is the caliber 1518, new for 2018. You can see and you can purchase this mono-pusher from the Line Sport Collection on the watch box.